So let's see, what do you need? Well, you could start off with a piece of paper. You don't really have to care about what colour it is because you are going to cover it up and paint on it and everything so it's not going to be visible. You could go for some kind of a net in the background so you could get, get, get some definition to the project. You could go for paper clips or safety pins or something that has got that aren't too high in their quality or I mean their I don't know what to say. Uh, you could go for wooden letters, you could go for buttons, you could go for die cuts. I mean if you are like me, hoarding die cuts that you have cut before and don't really know what to do with them, well smash them into this project. You could go for die uh, cogwheels, you could go for numbers, anything that tickles your fancy. Just go for it. You could go for pearls. Anything. So let's see if I'm going to I, I can get started here. I'm going to make a cover for a book that I've got. So I have actually cut it to size. And you need to think about a little bit about what the end result is going to be. Let's see if I can find something that's sensible to show you. Well, let's take this mask. Because here I have something at the bottom. I have got that net and it does look rather fancy when it's underneath something else. So I could put it here and there perhaps. You could also go for some other kind of net or holiness. And uh, I don't I just can't find my punchinella now, so I have to think about what I want to do with this. So I'm going to get started with the net. And when I'm doing it, I'm not paying too much attention of where it ends up. Of course you could plan everything really carefully if you wanted to. But I'm not that kind of a crafter, are I? No, am I? So this mesh actually has a glue to it. So I'm just going to put it here and there, really. I'm just thinking where it could be fun to have. And well, I'm just going to put it here. And I'm going to put it even once more from up here because this is just the base and then since it is a book it could of course be nice to have a saying on top of that or something but I'm thinking of actually going all in with some paper clips I, I really did like the background, the paperclip thing gave me, you see. I really like this. The repetition of paperclips, even though are, they are different in their looks. So I'm thinking that perhaps I could put lots of, lo and lots and lots and lots of um, paperclips here. And in order to make them stick, I'm going to need some double-sided tape. And in this case, I'm just going to tape Put the tape across here. On top of the mesh and everything. I could of course done done it the other way around. But in this case I just didn't think about that. And I'm going to put another strip there. Let's see if I can put it there perhaps. So when it comes to paper clips, it's fun to have different sizes and shapes. I'm going to find out where, where the rest of my paper clips are. So let's see, I'm going to take away the tape here. You really need to make it stick to the surface before you peel it off. This protective paper there. And since this is going to be a pretty big a project, I might do a fast forward mode on this. No. Like 
like so. So on this one, well, it does seem a bit structured, doesn't it? And I, I'm go I am going to go for something similar. I'm going to make a pattern of sorts in order to make as many of these paper clips fit. But I'm going to, you're going to see that I've got different kinds of shapes here. I'm not going to pay too much attention. Actually, actually, I'm just going to, let's see if I can do it like this, so you can see where I am better. Perhaps I can even keep it like that then. I'm going to put the same paper clip across like so. And you see, I'm in luck. All of the four actually fitted like that. I'm not going to be bothered about it being really, really straight or not. I'm just going to put them there. And I'm going to create some kind of a line going like... So I'm going to be pretty basic uh, when it comes to creating that pattern. But I have to think about how well I can fit these paper clips. And this one I'm going to turn the other way around. I'm going to do the same thing here, if I have the room that is for it. You know, in this case I'm actually going to put them in the same direction because that one fitted that shape better. Let's see if I can go even closer. And what should I do next then? Well, I could go for perhaps some smaller paper clips if I have got them. I put them I think repetition is the key here, like so. I've got three there. I could put three here as well. And then I could go for... You know, I've got these spiral clips. These are nice. Let's see. So I'm, I'm going to be ready now. So what I'll do, I will take this tape, and since this is self-adhesive, I can just rip it off like that and crinkle it up before I get started. And then put this on top. And I'm going to take it a little bit on both sides. And then I'm going to do some pre-pressing here. Because I'm going to do this really carefully later on. With a so-called... It's called... Let's see. It's an embossing pen, some people say. Let me think what the name for it is. And you can just fold this tape. I mean, it's really easy to work with could take a straight piece, put it on there, diagonally perhaps, now I got it, it's called a stylus pen, the thing that I'm talk talking about, so there, you can see, I mean it's really easy to rip off the tape, to cut it into, or rip it into the size you want and then I could just put it back there so now I'm going to find my stylus pens I do actually have a kit 
for it but you could also go for some proper tools let's see so my favorite thing to do first is just just start with the biggest ball and then I'm going to start rubbing and I mean everything every crevice and nook should be rubbed into so all of these paper clips and the magic mesh underneath will be visible so I will be going all over these things several times but I'm going to start off with the biggest because I don't want to crack the tape up but on the other hand if I were to crack the paper up or make it bust I could just put on some more tape it's as easy as that and then start all over again and I don't have to put tape on all, all of the surface just over the piece that actually just broke but as I told you I'm using this biggest and first just in order to make everything pop up now you can't really see how it's going to end up but since you have this to compare it with I'm sure you can realize that what I'm doing is that I'm creating the depth of those paper clips I'm really making them pop from the background so I'll be continuing with this it's going to take some time as you can imagine so when I have finished using this I'm going to go for a smaller size I'm going to start all over again and then I'm going to go for an even smaller and that's when I really get the details out and if I have a smaller still I'm going to use that one as well so here it is so you shouldn't go for the smallest stylus pen from the get-go because then there's a risk of you actually breaking the aluminum tape as I did there but then on the other hand you are going to paint this over with some acrylic paint and then those holes and crevices won't show that much so I'm going to sit myself down and start rubbing bye bye so now that I have worked the paper clips with those pens, rubbing pens or whatever you call them, uh, stylus pens, my hand is pretty sore so I need to rest for a minute but I could start painting this with some black acrylic paint. I'm just using a regular acrylic painter's acrylic, just bought this in a supermarket so it isn't anything fancy. And I'm just going to take a little because I don't want to cover all of this up. You could, of course, make it really dark if you wanted to and then just rub off the excess. But I'm thinking, why should I waste that much ink or paint if I'm going to rub it off anyway? But um, it is a good thing if you... at least cover the background and such. You could also rub it off later if you wanted to. You could paint it on with a brush if you feel like that's easier. But in this case I just thought I'd work with this sponge that I've got here. And the sponge is going to break up pretty soon, I see. It's And if you have uh, cracked the tape, well, it's a good thing to actually cover those holes in with this black ink, black uh, acrylic paint. I see some sp spots where the green paper is showing through. So make sure you cover those. You know, I think I'll just go for the paintwork really, because this one, it didn't really work out as I planned. 
So I'm just going to paint it on. And you see it's pretty easy to even with the paintbrush to measure or limit the amount of paint that's going on top here. And with a paintbrush it, it's, it is easier to actually get into those grooves. And just with a wet paper cloth you can wipe off the excess. You could also make a peel paint effect if you are willing to let this dry. Put on another colour and let that one dry and then put on even a third coat with something else and then start wiping off the excess paint because then I'm thinking that you might be able to get a really nice three colour effect with this. Well I hope I have covered the bits I wanted. So now I'm just going to take a paper cloth and in this case I'm just going to keep it dry because I don't want to take off everything. That's the risk with using a white wet, wet cloth because that will actually just take away more than you want perhaps. So see I'm just using a blotchy ma manner here or a way to do things. So first I'm rubbing it off and when I when it in places where it is really thick with acrylic paint, I'm just blotting, blotting, stamping the paper like this. So here we are. So now it's up to me to figure out if I want to go on colouring this one in with a different Inca Gold shimmer pastes and I do believe that I want to rep replicate that tag that I had here with different colours but then it's a question of me perhaps putting a label on this for that book that I'm working on perhaps I should because I'm thinking of putting some quotes in that book so perhaps I could put the word quotes here Just thinking aloud really. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly so I'm going to clean that, that brush off and I'll be back later. Okay so let's see where I'll end up. Just taking a bit of this green. It's called lava green. I'm just going to rub it on a bit here and a bit there. And I'm actually using the three of my fingers to do this. And in this case I'm just rubbing it in, rubbing it in, in a diagonal pattern like so. So let's see if I could scrape it back like so. And perhaps take a baby wipe or something to just clean it. And then I want to go for some orange. And I'm just going to put it on my fingers there. I'm just going to put it here and there, you see. And it doesn't take much. The colour lasts for quite some... quite a lot. And there's still more there. And then I'm going to go for some pink.
let's see. We do have some blue. And I do know that the blue is pretty strong a colour, so I won't be taking uh, much of that at all. Just a little bit. So let's see where that wants to end up. What else could I put there? I do have some platinum. Looking at this, well, I like this actually. I do have some copper as well. But I still do want to keep something black, so I think I'll just cool myself down now and not to overdo this. And with a baby wipe I can actually clean the gloves off pretty nicely as well. And the Inca Gold dries pretty quickly, so you needn't wait for that long. So actually I do feel pretty pleased with this and imagining that on the cover of that book it could be rather nice, wouldn't it, don't you think? So now the question is, I still haven't decided on what kind of a text I want to put here or if I should just keep it as it is. I think I'll just glue it down and uh, be happy with it. So that's one of the possibilities of making a faux metal cover or technique or background or anything. I did really fancy this paperclip method here. So that's it from me. Bye bye.